Hello there and welcome to another video. This here is my new vlogging camera. It's the Sony ZV-1 and it's what I use when I go out and about into the landscape and we're going to be doing that today. But this little thing is brilliant. The image quality is amazing. It's light, easy to hike around and it's also assisted me in upgrading these videos to 4K as well. So yeah, really happy with it. It's hard to buy a bad camera these days. Anyway, before we get going today, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a domain name, a website, or an online store, make your next move with Squarespace. There we go. So here in the UK, we're in the midst of lockdown two at the moment. And just like during the first lockdown, I am just trying to cope with it by continuing to push myself forward. Now, I always will try to get outside of my comfort zone as much as I possibly can, because when we do, we start to expand the circle, our comfort zone, and build layers of resilience around our character, and hopefully build some new skills as well. Just going out in crazy or interesting weather might be enough to push you outside of your comfort zone. But in today's video, I'm going to hit a few of those things that put me outside of my creative comfort zone as I try to keep moving forwards through what is an increasingly frustrating time. So I hope you'll come with me. Let's go. Today is by no means gonna be straightforward, I don't think, because I'm on the edge of this hill that goes out onto this sort of flatter plain behind and there's fog around everywhere. You can see some of the clouds on the background there, just absolutely stunning. But in terms of coming up with a shot, so far, it's not proving straightforward. The fog and the cloud is not in the perfect place for getting a great composition. I'm looking over there now behind me, and whilst that cloud is really interesting. Framing it up, it's just not working because the cloud alone is not sufficient to make a good shot. I don't like the flat top of the hill just there and there isn't any shape in the actual land that's going to allow that cloud to enhance it and make a good composition. So I'm going to go and have a little explore around. There are some lovely trees in this area so foggy trees could be something to look at or it could just be a complete bust. The cloud is moving around in quite a strange direction and I'm in this kind of clearing at the moment, which you can see, and then just sort of surrounded by fog everywhere else. And there is also some beautiful autumn colours still, which might hopefully work for me. Good to be out again. I'm feeling good. <laughs> just look at it over there. I'm just gonna have to stop and have a quick look, I think. Right, I'm set up for my first shot of the day and it's kind of, feeling all a bit rushed this morning because there's just interesting cloud all over the place and it's changing all the time. So I'm currently set up on a shot just behind me there. I've got the 70 to 200 millimeter lens on and I'm just looking out across this valley to the hill over there in the distance, which as I'm talking to you, has got cloud moving over it like a wave. I've tried to catch a little time lapse of that, but it's just looking fantastic. And there's just a really strong blue tone at the moment, as we've got a little bit of blue sky above me. The sun is starting to poke through. There's a little bit of yellow in the cloud as well. So really interesting conditions. And it just feels really ethereal as those trees are kind of popping out of that fog over there. There is also some really interesting fog behind me which keeps changing and that's probably a nicer shot as it curves. It's a really nice curve. I'll show you that in a minute. There's just so much going on. I'm struggling to just concentrate on one thing but that's the thing. You've got to slow down even in these exciting conditions. For this composition I'm just trying to use the shapes that do exist once I've zoomed in quite far with that 7200 and kind of using some diagonals that form an overall shape for the composition. I'm confined to where the trees are popping out and the hills are showing through the fog so that's kind of deciding what goes in the frame as well and then it's just a case of adjusting slightly to get that shape right that I'm talking about. It's going to be quite monotone, probably use some of the blue tone that exists and then the trees over there are quite dark because there isn't any direct sunlight on them at the moment. So I'm gonna to have to try and, and deal with that. So I think it's just a case of now coming over to the camera and shooting. So I'm at 
F11, I might actually go down to F8. I'm just gonna put the live view on to help me get my exposure right, and then focus. Uh, yeah, see it's difficult to focus in that mist as well. Let me zoom right in. Yeah, that looks okay. And then just fire. Two second timer, F8, 1 13th of a second, ISO 100. Yeah, lovely ethereal feel to that. And it's gonna be very simple to post process, which is what I like. Just almost images that edit themselves because the shot was just right. He got it right. It felt right here and it just needs us few tweaks to pull it exactly to where it needs to be. That's the kind of landscape photography I like to do. So I'm gonna now rush over there because I think that's probably going to be better. Right, in fact, let's just do that. I'll show you that image now. I've just switched straight back on because the cloud looks fantastic, but it's changing all the time. I think it might have just, I might have just lost what I had frustratingly, but the sky where the cloud's clearing, there's some lovely layers of color in it. The ground's really muddy and slippery as well. So I just need to be as quick as I possibly can be. I love mornings like this, but <laughs> you don't want to miss anything, miss anything special. Ah, oh, see, it's gone a bit now. I might have to wait. Let's see what we can do though. So I absolutely love it when it's like this, where, the conditions are such that it changes pretty much second by second. It's exciting and it's difficult and it's where complete mastery and having good craft with your camera comes into play because when things are changing so fast you don't want to be faffing about with the technical settings and worrying about your camera because you've got enough to think about just trying to get your composition right because it's just been the case then where I set the camera up, I composed and then literally in the time it took me to compose the shot on top of the tripod, the conditions have changed. So I'm having to readjust up and down, left and right, and then kind of <laughs> ducking and weaving to find the right perspective. So it's exciting, it's challenging. And if you don't get the shot, it can be very frustrating when you know, like I said last week, you know there's a fantastic composition to be had. However, I have captured a couple of things. When I was back up the top of the hill there, that's when I noticed down here that it was at its very best and it's now changed. I'm gonna have to wait and hope that the fog comes back a little bit into my composition because I am composing on the distant hills back there. The waves of that fog over those hills are just, is just absolutely beautiful. I'm intrigued by shots like this or scenes like this. I absolutely love it. It's that relationship between the cloud and the hill that provides a layered depth essentially where normally if the cloud wasn't there there wouldn't be any you would just see one rolling flat hill but because the cloud gets in between them once you bring the 3D world down to the 2D world you just see that depth all the way through and I absolutely love that. So then I'm trying to compose the image because the cloud on its own is not quite working and it's very distant. I've got 200 millimeters, but it's not enough to get right in on that cloud. But there is a lovely kind of curve from the bottom right of the frame going around that valley, which just looks lovely. Now on its own, that's great, but I then need to balance it out from the bottom left-hand side of the image. So what I'm then doing is using one of the lines of the hill, which is like a sort of diagonal line coming up from the bottom left, then to the right hand side of the, the image at the bottom right, there are some beautiful autumnal colors in there. So it could be, could be a really, really nice image. Just if there's fog moving around all the time and I just want some to cover that field a little bit. And it's not far off now actually. So let's go and shoot it again. So I'm at F8 because I'm far enough away to have depth right across the scene. I might actually up it to F11 just to be safe. And I need to go stop back up. So I'm now at 1 13th of a second, ISO 100. I'm just gonna make sure I'm focused. Manual focus, let's just check that on the screen. Yeah, that looks good. Two second time, I'm gonna hold the tripod down to keep it still in this wind. Let me take a look at that. I mean, what I, re what I really find an interesting as well is the cloud because there's that layer of fog in the distance on one layer and then above that there's the actual higher cloud which is picking up some beautiful colour from this golden hour 
that I'm now in. I mean, it's not that golden, but it is the golden hour, even though I can't see the sun. I'm gonna hang around though for a few more minutes and see if I can make it even better. Yet again, it's what makes me feel great about doing landscape photography, being out here completely by myself in this stunning landscape with these stunning conditions quite close to where I live as well. So yeah, I feel like I'm winning this morning. Let's take a look at that image and see what you think. See now, I'm <laughs> all of a sudden in thick, thick fog. And that has happened in the last 10 minutes, going from clear and somewhat sunny to now, like you can see, really, really thick fog. I have the camera composed doing a time lapse, but I also did capture a shot of this scene here, which you now can't see. And I was about to talk through that that I captured just before we got that epic drone footage and what I think is going to be an incredible time lapse. Uh, but yeah, I can't talk you through it now really because it's gone and I didn't take that much B-roll of it, but <laughs> I now can't see anything. Uh, so I might have a little look at a couple of these pine trees, see if there's something to be done with there in the woods. But <laughs> it's funny, I just can't believe that's happened. Like, I think that time lapse is going to be great. <laughs> great fun, great fun. Right, so I thought I was finished, but I thought with this fog, it's definitely worth doing one last shot as I hunted around for a nice woodland scene and I've come quite far off the path here and found this peaceful, beautiful wood. And just look at that behind me. It's so nice. I am lucky enough as well to have a little bit of a sun trying to poke through the cloud, which is just giving this scene that beautiful, golden, misty woodland feeling. Now, like I talked about on last week's video, not sure how good I am at woodland photography, but I'm enjoying this very much. And it's this tree here, the kind of three branches coming out of it, or three trunks essentially, that I am using as the sort of starting point of the image, the subject as such. And I'm focusing on that tree. That's over to the right hand side of the frame. And then I'm going through that gap there to that other cluster of trees in there. And that's gonna be blown out into that mist, going soft into that background. I'm zoomed in to about 60 millimeters at the moment to try and cut out as much of the sky as possible. I've almost cut out all of the sky actually. And the fog is thick, it's beautiful. There's some moss and uh, stuff growing on the trunk of the tree. So it just looks fantastic. And then there's some, either it's lichen or it's a silver birch away in the distance there, but there's some white highlights on some of the trees, which just looks fantastic. Then I've got this these autumnal ferns carpeting the ground the light coming through no leaves on the branches but i don't mind it's the bark is really wet so it's got that lovely texture to it and then it's all framed by the upper branches so i'm currently at f8 i've been playing around with a shallow depth of field as well with f2.8 with this lens it creates quite a nice vignette natural vignette and then we lose the trees into the depth of field as well in the background currently at f8 though 1 13th of a second, ISO 100, two second timer, as the sun just starts to poke through again. That's lovely. There's also a little branch to the bottom there that's just poking up into, away from the right hand sort of corner of the frame, but I'm just getting that in to give it a little breathing space, and it just completes that tree there. So I'll take one more look at that as we come around here. I actually think I'm really happy with that.
Right, so I'm gonna show you the print of that image in just a minute, but as you know, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Now, if you are a photographer and you want to share your work with the world, you're gonna need a website at some point, and there is definitely no better place to be for photographers than on Squarespace. My site is built on Squarespace and I've been thrilled with it uh, from day one. You can just upload your images really easily. They've got beautiful templates to choose from, many specific for photography, so they show your images full screen or just in a really beautiful gallery. And it's just such a great way to share your work. You can then very easily upgrade to an online store so you can start selling some of your prints. If you ever run into any trouble, they've got 24 seven customer support to get you going again. I used it just last week, actually. It's actually really good. They sorted my problem straight away. Give it a go. Go to squarespace.com to start your free trial today. And then if you like what you've put together, use the offer code FIRSTMAN to get 10% off your first purchase. Right, okay, I'm gonna get that print. So there we have it. I'm absolutely thrilled with that. Yeah, I'm just really happy with the way the color has turned out. It's exactly the mood I wanted from that scene. The fog just looks beautiful. And yeah, I love the colors and the warmness and the magical feeling that it produces. Just really happy. So pleased I pushed myself outside of that creative comfort zone to actually go and do that. And I was outside my comfort zone in a few ways there. Just getting up for sunrise, getting out of bed early, I cannot stand it. It hurts physically sometimes. I'm then dealing with the funny weather where I'm racing around trying to get so much done all at once. And that's not the best way to do landscape photography. We're much more comfortable when we're sat or stood with time on our side and we can slow right down. But when the weather's like that, you just can't do it. But if you get on top of it and get those images, it's so, so satisfying. And recently as well, I've been sharing some of these creative anxieties with you. I'm just hopeful that by doing this, I'm becoming an overall uh, better photographer maybe, and uh, maybe a more creative person that is happy with the work they are creating. Looking at that now though, I do feel like I am making progress. And, going down the path to being a better photographer and a better woodland photographer. Now, another way you can do this is to get solid and reliable critique. If you've got a friend or a trusted source to give you that. I, one of my favorite moments with all of photography was when I used to go on a annual trip to Scotland with Lyle, who you've seen on quite a few videos. One of my favorite moments was always when we'd been out for the day shooting, we came back to whichever cottage we were staying in, we get a nice roaring fire going, we have a drink and we sit and edit photos together. And it's just at that point that it's so satisfying because all day we've been outside of that comfort zone in an area we don't know, pushing ourselves. And the best thing about, for me at least, getting outside of your comfort zone is returning back to it because it's all the more cozy and comfortable and it feels good and it's satisfying that you know that you've challenged yourself and pushed yourself out of it where you've gained all this new experience and you've hopefully become a better person. For me as well, it then just leaves an enormous sense of gratitude and fulfillment. And it's this gratitude and new sense of perspective that we get when we push ourselves outside of the comfort zone that makes it all worthwhile. And it's that that will also guard us against all of the shit that the world is bound to throw at us during our lifetime. And that's the point, it shouldn't be easy and comfortable all of the time. We're just not designed to be like that. Challenge is the key to our happiness and contentment. It's then our curiosity that serves to motivate us, to keep us driving forward as we wonder what comes next.